Hi guys, hello and welcome to another episode of the Night Watchman, a cricket podcast where me and Sohm discuss about various cricket topics. Today we have a very special guest with us. He's joining all the way from Perth. His name is Loki, and he has a cricket channel on Insta by the name of Baj World of Cricket. You guys should totally check it out. We actually were following that page since quite some time now, and we were liking it. So that's when me and Sohm thought that we should totally collaborate with this guy, and he was generous enough to give us his time. And so welcome, Loki. Welcome to the channel. And Thank you. Very That, glad to have very, you here. It's very kind of you to say all those nice words. Yeah, I'm very happy to be here as well to talk to talk some cricket with you guys as well. Very happy to be here. Perfect, perfect. So I, I I'll give you a disclaimer. The only reason we called you here because was because that uh, Australia versus India series that just happened in 2020-21. The border gaps that Tokyo I'm talking about. And we wanted to talk to an Australian guy. <laughs> we were like, no, now fine. we have to talk to an Australian guy, and we have to talk as Indian fans, and we have to like have some banter with him. So yeah, you know, that's your thoughts and uh, opinions on that series. Ah, uh, it's really mixed because it was some, it was some damn good cricket. Like the quality of cricket overall was absolutely exceptional, but it's just yeah. like we lost. We we. Part of me says we kind of choked part of that series because, especially at Sydney, you, we could we should have taken more than five wickets on a fifth day pitch. I mean, Payne drops some catches. I'm a massive Payne fan, but that was poor keeping. But yeah. we got blown away at the Gabba, and it's like it, it's sad, but it was a monumental series for cricket. Correct, correct, correct. Totally agree. Yeah. So, uh, Loki, I wanted to ask you this question. Uh, I wanted to ask this question to every every. Foreign guy in general, like any non-Indian, I ask this question too, and that is, uh, how big is cricket in your country? Is it the first or the second sport in Australia, or how does it go? It's a bit complex because Australians, we like so much sport that it can get very seasonal. For example, right now it is AFL and rugby season. Sorry, there's my dog. Yeah. But anyway, those sports are absolutely dominating everyone's attention right now. So. For example, the T20 series in Bangladesh was a little bit out of sight, out of mind for the mm. general public. But for at least six months of the year, cricket is absolutely huge. Like it is constantly on the agenda. Every media is talking about it. Like the Ashes gets pages and pages and pages of news, and so did the Border Gavaskar series. So, like a lot of things in Australia, it is massive, but it's also a bit seasonal in terms of when we follow it in our most detail. Makes sense. So our season goes on for twelve months in a year. <laughs> our cricket season is actually twelve months in a year, and that is the only sport that we actually follow as a country. Like cricket is the only sport in realistic terms. It was a, it was a bit different because a lot of my followers are from India, and it is a bit yeah. different when you're like they're like, "Oh, are you covering the IPL?" It's not something which I've traditionally focused on, partially because yeah. we don't get it on television here because of mm. corporate things yeah, yeah. and because it's just during AFL season or when the, when the English Premier League is on or something so it's like it's, yeah. it, it was an interesting experience something I'm glad that I understand now yeah. nice. we didn't know you didn't get IPL at all there so you have to like get it from some sources right? so it's on it's only on pay television and it's like uh-huh. 25 bucks a month and I simply don't have the funds to okay. get that it's it's on one of Rupert Murdoch's things but it's like it's not on free tv so yeah yeah okay so uh, my next question to you is uh, obviously uh, even though india beat australia in that series australia still had a, still had a chance to get it, get into the finals and that couldn't happen because australia cancelled the south africa tour so what is your op- opinion on that i was bitterly disappointed we cancelled it to be honest from both a personal Australian perspective and a cricketing perspective because it would have been good to see guys go over back there after the ball tampering tour, for example, like Smith Warner, see if they can redeem themselves. And that South African team's not that bad. Like They've got a decent pace bowling arsenal yeah. and guys like Markram and Van der Dusen are decent bats. And I know of reports from like the grade cricket and other sources at the time were like, our board was like, you have to do this. South Africa complied that, okay, now you have to do this as well. And then it got yeah. to a point where we made so many unreasonable demands huh. that South Africa, 
that South Africa was like, we just can't do this. And we're like, okay, we're not coming. And it was disappointing for guys like Cam Green, obviously. Usman Kawaja was back in the squad. Alex Carey in the test squad for the first time. So that was really disappointing as well that those guys didn't get an opportunity. Correct. I was actually pretty disappointed because I, as a fan, always loved the Australia versus South Africa series. Even that series where you guys got all out for what, 59? Uh, when uh, Philander and uh, Stain were... 40. Like, uh, in 49, Hobart? 49. Or... Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Was it oh, 47, 47. 47, 47. Yeah, exactly. 47, yeah. yeah. That series for me was when I was like awakened to world test cricket, not not just mm. Indian test cricket. And I was like, okay, mm. I have to follow this series. South Africa versus Australia is always going to be a series to look out for because there is actual fast bowling there. And that was at the time when India didn't have many fast bowlers. So mm. that for me was a revelation. Like you can actually bowl that fast and like fast bowlers are the real thing in cricket. And I was like, okay, my mind is blown now. I really want to follow this series. And since then, I've always been a fan of South Africa versus Australia series. Series, sorry. And yeah, totally. I was very disappointed. That's been some ripping series. Yeah, you even think of when we've been blown away, like in that ball tampering tour or in 2012, yeah. where, where South Africa won 1-0 and could have comfortably won 2-0 yeah. or 3-0. Yeah. They're Smith always ripping with a series. In hand, right? Yeah, that's two, uh, that was 209, but I mean, yeah. But yeah, they've yeah. they've they've always been ripping series. Okay, so now shifting from test cricket to limited overs cricket, I have to ask you this: What is up with Australia's limited overs team? What oh, is up God. with Australia? What is happening? Like you guys lost four one to Bangladesh in Bangladesh. Okay, I, I realize that playing in subcontinent pitches isn't your strongest suit, but then again, like getting blown away by Bangladesh that badly in a T Twenty series, mm. I realize also that your play, main players weren't playing in that series. But again. Even Bangladesh had two main players missing in that series. And that is really inexcusable as an Australian. Like, I think from an Australian point of view, to see your team doing that bad in foreign conditions. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I think if I think if this series happened during our summer, heads yeah. would have rolled. But because it's in that little bit of out of sight, out of mind thing, people are yeah. sort of like, oh, okay, it's just another T20 series. And I've actually got down here a whole list of things which are wrong with the broader first-class structure. And I think they're seriously impacting our T20 team. So to start with, the pitch quality mm. in first-class cricket is awful. They are okay. genuinely absolute roads most of the time in both the Big Bash and the Sheffield Shield. Like I can, a lot of Sheffield Shield games, especially in places like Adelaide and the Mel- and MCG and the Wacker or North Sydney Oval, are like 500 plays 450. And it's like guys are, mm. it's not helping guys' techniques as well because they're just getting used to playing on absolute rows and then they go to somewhere which has a slightly more difficult task and they're playing awfully. Because like guys like, I've got stats down here, guys like McDermott are averaging 32 in Sheffield Shield cricket, Enrique is 36 and they are like the best we've got. You, you don't have guys like Shreyas Iyer averaging 55 in India. Mm-hmm. And it's really complex and I don't think we also select our T20 team properly. I think we just yeah. pick guys who have done well in the big bash without picking a combined 11. It's like Alex Carey only opens in the big bash and we're expecting him to yeah. bat like four, five or six. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah sorry, I like, talk for a long time. Disappointed but... with the selection too, yeah. Yeah, we had that question ahead also. Like, why do successful BBL players just fail everywhere else? Like, what is up with that? I, I, I don't think the quality of the league is particularly good. Like, if it was not in Australia, I don't think guys would be coming here. Especially like we saw with Bangladesh. We can't play spin. The quality of spin bowling in the Big Bash is not great. Because no offence to guys like Peter Hatsoglu. They are, they're not bad cricketers, hmm. but they're they're not the kind of guys at right now who are what you want to prepare for to go up in the big bash. Pardon me, go up into international cricket. And it's like there's just yeah. so many deficiencies with our T20 game that, yeah. and we've now finally realised, oh, we might need to fix those now when we start losing when we should have been looking at them yeah. in the past. So what you said that uh, the pitches are like absolutely flat when in first class at first class level in your country, I think that must be a big issue right now because Bangladesh just like they got rank turners for all of the T20s, like not even the last T20s, all of the T20s get rank turners, 
and that didn't really help because they were playing at the same venue again and again so that must have yeah. been an issue yeah i think pitches were part of an issue but to be bowled out for 62 you, yeah. like the pitch can only be part of the problem there there's got to be something about like techniques or preparation or oh my god my apologies if you heard that my brother's just got home and yelled anyway um yeah i think there's far more problems than just spinning wickets yeah so sometimes also, you get all also out the on, batting order right sorry, sorry sometimes sorry. you get all out on 62 and sometimes 36 that's okay that happens oh. <laughs> Also, the batting order is also one of the problems, right? Because in one match, you see carry opening, then the other match is batting two down, then the other match, Wade is opening, then the other match, he's playing four down. Like, there is no consistency in that. Any player is playing anywhere. Like, they randomly select people and they're like, okay, you go for opening, you go one down, you go two down, and Mm. then that's our batting order for today. Like, how how is that? Yeah. I just don't know. I think they got absolutely scrambled in Bangladesh. They were like, we have no one who we trust to bat on yeah. these wickets. And they just tried to find a combination and it didn't work. I'm sorry if there is a bit of noise in the background. My family has just got home. Yeah, but um, yeah, when, when the Zoom meeting pauses, I'll close all my doors. But anyway, um, yeah, I just don't, I don't think they had a complete lack of confidence in everyone, essentially. And they were just trying to find people to bat around Mitch Marsh. Because yeah. he was the only guy who just stayed at three or series. Yeah. Uh, to to be honest, I really like Matthew Wade, and he was opening well in the South Africa series, right? The recent mm, series, I, I, West Indies, West I, Indies. Sorry. West Indies, yeah, he was all right. Yeah, he was one of the better well. ones. Okay. Yeah, and uh, right. they just messed up with his batting position. He should have kept opening because the World Cup mm. is me and yeah. If he plays, have... he'll open. Yeah, sorry. If he plays, he'll open in the World Cup. So I don't see the point in uh, putting him anywhere else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now shifting to a slightly lighter topic. So, because we had this, uh, like, not, I wouldn't say very debatable or very heated argument or anything like that, but because we had this very cricket intensive chat, now we'll shift to something more of a cinematic nature. What was the reaction of people after watching the test? Now I realize that is also cricket and that is also based entirely on cricket, but that is still, again, a TV series at the end of it all. Mm-hmm. So, how was the reaction of the people after watching the test? I think we, I think we loved it. I think it went over really well in Australia. I think I must admit it's been a very, it's been a while since I watched it because to get through like eight hours of television in a row can be a bit yeah. difficult. And it is we're losing, so there is part of that motivation, which is like oh, I just mm-hmm. want to watch some of the highlights of us winning. Yeah. But it was a, it was a damn good series. I hope they make a part two, and I think. Hopefully, I think Langer and Payne came out of it really well because they, to me at least, they came across as good leaders and trying to do the right thing. And yeah, I, I just hope that was the perspective that got across to more Australians that these guys did have a plan and they finally got to see what really goes on inside our cricket team. It couldn't have got any worse, essentially. I think they, yeah. they made a calculated gamble on the success of the team and it wrapped up in a pretty perfect story as far as they were concerned yeah, we kind of. retained we got the ashes in england for the first time in 18 years and mm. it showed a side to the australian cricket team which we as an australian public have never seen before so i think it was yeah. a win-win for everyone also this is underrated but australia actually reached the semi-finals of the cricket world cup after mm. having conceded the most runs in an odi ever to england uh, mm. when yeah. justin langer at final rubbing coaching in, the, in england yeah so yeah, Australia I still reached the semi-final, which I was very surprised with. Yeah. Because... I think many it... people do not talk about that, but it should be talked about more because of the mm. way that you guys were playing cricket at that point of time when Smith and uh, Warner got banned to actually reaching the semi-finals later on. I think that was like a pretty good achievement, but people don't talk about it enough. Yeah, it, it, it's a com- it was a very complex team as well because you had Finch was absolutely firing and Warner wasn't firing, but he was getting that yeah. luck, which he lost in the Ashes, and he was yeah. making tons. Right. And then yeah. we had Carey, who had an exceptional World Cup, and, and the bowlers who made up for a for Stoinis not performing as well as he should have, and like Kawaja and Marsh being thrown into disarray by the return of Smith. So it was a really good achievement considering everything that had just happened in that ODI team for guys yeah. coming back. 
And I think it was a bit overshadowed by the way which England demolished us in the semi-final, which was a bit yeah. unfortunate. But it was, it was understandable considering that was an absolute demolition. Right. Yeah. So, they, like, there's been some news in the air that like people have been starting talking about Justin Langer. So, uh, what do the Australians think about Langer as a coach in general? Like, what is the common opinion? It's very mixed right now. I think that might be something to do with recency bias because we've lost. But yeah. I'm a Langer fan. I've defended him on in videos on my Insta account. But it's like people sometimes his selections can be confusing at times, like the dropping of Usman Khawaja and other things. And he does have problems as a coach. Like I've willingly admitted that he he likes his players to be absolute hard nuts who just run through brick walls. Yeah. And his record's not that bad. He's done well in tests and pretty well in ODIs, yeah. but it's that T20s which are the issue. So right now it's really juxtaposed and I could see him leaving with pain after the Ashes. I hope not, but I could really see it happening. Well, pain out of the Ashes? Well, at the end of the, the ashes, ashes, sorry. At the end okay, of the Ashes. Yeah, at the end. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, at the end, yeah. the end sorry. Okay, uh, Loki, so since you're an Australian, I have to ask you this. Mm-hmm. Can you explain David Warner's TikTok to us? Can you explain his oh, Insta God. reel? <laughs> I, what I th- I, on a commercial sense, I can understand it. But if I was a yeah. 34-year-old man, I wouldn't be doing that. I think <laughs> he has nailed that market. Hang on. Is, in, is yeah. TikTok still banned in India? Um, yeah, it's I banned in India. Okay, so, so it's banned in India. So Now he's shifted to Insta reels because yes, TikTok has got banned. Many people have shifted to Insta reels. Now. Yeah. I think he was just trying to on a commercial expense, get more into the Indian market to some expense with that so, yeah. sort of, because a lot of the clips are from Bollywood, I thought. Yeah. Is, is that correct? Or, yeah. From overall Bollywood, Indian cinema. Bollywood, yeah, overall yeah. Indian cinema. His yeah. team mm-hmm. was, is from the South, so he focuses on some South cinema also. Okay. Yeah, I think, I, think it, I think it's mostly commercial, but he also probably does kind of enjoy it, to be honest. I certainly yeah. wouldn't do it. But I think, yeah, like, after that, confusing. Sandpaper issue, like he's just come out a different Warner because I absolutely hated mm. Warner before that because he was that aggressive guy. He has yes, a celebration so after I. completing so the century. Like I just couldn't digest him at all. But after this, like he's just smiling every time. Even in IPL, if he has lost the game, he's smiling every time. Mm-hmm. Kind of like he's it, mellowed. but yeah, I kind of like it, but also miss the aggressions somehow. Some mm. some somehow. Yeah, he's we do lack a bit of aggression in the team sometimes. I find Warner did cross the line a lot, but we do sort of lack that aggression. Sometimes it is like, okay, we, we are trying a little bit too hard to be cookie cutter nice guys. And we do go over the top at times. Like in India, Payne's remark weren't great. Sorry, against India. But it is, yeah, Warner's definitely changed and he has, he's become, I think it's also in line with being a new dad, with a dad to like three young daughters. I think that also plays a big yeah. role. Okay. Yeah. So let's move on to the questions. Uh, mm-hmm. I like the Okay, it's not that funny, but why is Lion called the goat when you have had Shane Vaughan in your team before? I've never so that, understood. That's that. like, it's a really confusing thing. He's called the goat because he's the goat of off spinners. We haven't had many great off spinners in the past. The yeah. he beat a guy called Hugh Trumbull who played around 1890s, 1900s. So we've had we haven't had a great off spinner for that long. So to have someone take 399 wickets bowling off spin, he's yeah. just called the GOAT because of so, that. I was thinking about this after we made this question. I thought like because he's a lion and he has the claim over GOAT, that is why I thought somehow like this. But okay, that's a pretty reasonable explanation. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and, and the Gary part, that comes from AFL. There was a famous AFL player called Gary Lyon. So, yeah, that's where oh, that comes okay. from as well. Okay. Oh, that's where nice Gary comes from. Okay, yeah, I always used to wonder where Gary from. came from. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's a very Australian reference. Nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. that makes sense now. Uh, okay, so since we're talking about Australian things, is Ashes bigger than the Cricket World Cup? Oh, for us, I'd say yes. In the <laughs> mind of the Australian public, yes. Yeah. Like, obviously... Broader cricket world, good God, no. Yeah, obviously like, not, but I mean, in the but, yeah. an Australian point of yeah, view. Yeah, for Australia, yes, because we've just, we've got so much history of like Bradman and mm. Neil Harvey, Keith Miller, all these guys who played Chapel, all these guys. The World Cup just 
has 50 years of history, which is damn good, but the Ashes has 150. And it's, yeah. it's, it's evolved from the little colonial nation fighting against the mother country to two, two nations trying to see yeah. every two years supremacy and everything. So, yeah, for us, I'd say the Ashes is bigger. How does it feel to know that Washington Sundar named his pet dog Gabba? Oh, I, I saw that. <laughs> That, that is such an Australian thing to do as well. It's like we would do something like that. Like I was half expecting Tim Payne to call his dog Edge Baston or something. He had a dog, but I like it, to be honest. I, Washington Sundar was great. He's such yeah. a handy cricketer. And, I mean, we got to take it. We lost the series. We got heated sometimes. Like, it's fun. It, it's good banter between the teams. And I hope people just take it as that. He's not trying to be nasty or mean. Yeah. It's just it, a bit of banter. It was very crazy for us because he doesn't. He isn't that guy who's aggressive on the field or who looks aggressive at yeah. least. Mm, he's he's quite, he just he went on to pull off that Chad move. <laughs> mm, it's such an alpha move. He's he's, <laughs> he's alpha the entire country. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. Yeah. So uh, yeah, my next question is like, how big is TGC in Australia? Because they have grown immensely in this, mm. like, from the IPL India, season. Yeah. From the IPL season. Yeah. When they've been IPL 2020 more Indian from cricket. that time. Yeah. So how big is it in Australia? I'd say it's seasonal again. Like, right now, I must admit, I haven't been listening to the pod because I've been quite busy with uni and other things. But it's also because of AFL focus other than overseas cricket. But it is damn big most of the time. Like, they get a lot of viewers and you always get people talking about it in cricket forums in Australia so I will definitely be tuning back into it probably around the T20 World Cup where I'll be aiming to when I have time yeah. but yeah it is it is a massive deal in Australia okay that's okay but yeah I, I get why it's seasonal okay I was kind of surprised but I get why it's seasonal you know it, it is it is a very Australian thing to jump between sports all over the time mm. but yeah I, I guess it's just how we work because you can't really play cricket all year here you just can't yeah so yeah uh okay so i had this question okay now this question is because i have a slightly negative vibe like towards travis said okay so mm-hmm. i'll frame this question in a proper way i'll try to frame this question in a proper way so how does it feel to be an australian cricket fan growing up to that invincible team. Like, I wouldn't say invincible, but that team, like, the team to beat. To now mm. having Travis Head bat at number five in your test team. Yeah, no. It is a massive step down as well. Like, no offence to Travis Head. He, he he averages under 30. When we had yeah. that team, Mike, Mike Hussey was averaging 50 in the Sheffield Shield and he couldn't get in the team. Like, at yeah. its peak. It is a step down. It's like we've gone from having that era of absolute dominance to where yeah. like Cameron Green scores seven centuries and um, that's a bit harsh on Cameron Green he's technically very good but the guy scores six or seven centuries and he's right into the test team like mm-hmm. it is a bit sad because like the quality and the depth just isn't there so it is sad but I think looking back on that era that was a ridiculous team having that mental aligner I think there's very few teams who you compare to, who you can compare to that in the past. Yeah, yeah. Hardly Maybe anything. the West Indies in the yeah. 1980s. Probably the West Indies of yeah. 1970s. Okay. Yeah, mm. I think probably the only team that could actually compete against the Australian team of mm. 90s and the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah. This is a question like that, like that is in the running since I think 2010s. I think so. 2010s, yeah. like early 2010s, like from 2013, mm. this question started surfacing and it, it's still relevant. So I mm. wanted to ask you, how do you see test cricket progressing in the next few years, considering only three, four teams are actually being competitive at the moment? Mm. It's a tough one because I like the idea of the World Test Championship, for example, but it just, we it's not working how it should be. Like trying to convert cricket to a league format the way we currently are and keeping all the series just it's not equitable and fair because you've got teams like Bangladesh playing seven tests whereas Australia is playing like 20 it's just not entirely fair but I think it is some progress 
and hopefully more of that money gets redistributed away from the big three nations in India, Australia and England. And hopefully yeah. that can develop more cricketing nations around the world and gradually feed back even to associate nations. And moves like putting cricket in the Olympics, hopefully that could seriously help if it's like advertises the, sh the shorter form of the game. Maybe mm -hmm. that might even get a more, a bigger following in the US or places like that. Yeah. Also, that is why I yeah. like Bangladesh I actually... <laughs> winning the under 19 World Cup because I think like in the future, if something like this happens, like Bangladesh winning a World Cup, it would be crazy. And I think that would help them in improving in test cricket also. Yeah, that would be a massive help. If they can get more depth and young players, that can be yeah. really, really helpful for the future of test cricket all around the world, not just in Bangladesh. Right. I actually liked it when England won the World Cup for similar reasons. England, although it might not be a superpower in terms of political power, but it's a superpower in terms of sporting uh, achievements or sporting events. So when England wins, uh, wins a sporting event, the whole world takes notice of it. So even mm. though, for example, Spain as a country might not play cricket that much, but when England wins a World Cup, the whole of Europe actually watches that, okay, England won a cricket World Cup. Now, probably it might raise some interest in people about the game and it might raise some information, knowledge or whatever about the game. So I was actually happy when England won the World Cup for those reasons. That is a very good And yeah, point, I to totally agree. The big three point, the big three point. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of agree to both parts. Why India doesn't want it to become an Olympic sport because India actually generates 70% of revenue, of, like 70% yeah. of total world cricket revenue. So that mm. is actually a lot. And when, when it said that you have to now share your revenue with the associate nations who actually bring in okay it started raining again <laughs> it, it started raining again yeah oh my god <laughs> english weather yeah. english weather english well. yeah we are talking about england how are these guys the people who invented cricket how did they even come up with cricket with such bad weather <laughs> oh my god you guys have a very nice cricket YouTube page. How does it feel to have a YouTube uh, to have a YouTube page which uploads highlights of the actual match just minutes after the play uh, after the day's play is done? Because us as Indians, if we want to watch highlights, you have to go to BCCI's website, and then they have that shitty user interface that you have to like uh, almost jump over to actually get the highlights of the match. So. I don't know. How does that work? How does it feel to have a nice YouTube page? Because as said, <laughs> Indians, we are glad that you have that YouTube page. We were actually very happy when we used to get a highlights of the Border Gavaskar trophy for that mm. uh, two months when yeah. uh, we were watching the test highlights. We were very glad. It is it is great because like, it is incredible to, you know, if you've missed a game or you've missed a day's play, you know, as soon as it's over, you can just yeah. go onto the YouTube page and it will be up within half an hour. And, yeah. It does offer me some perspective as well because, you know, Australians, I've talked to people like we get grumpy when it's like, oh, ECB hasn't uploaded the highlights. It's half an hour after the game because we're just used to that <laughs> exceptional service. Because even the Big yeah. Bash, they're up yeah. maybe a, an hour or so after the game. Yeah. And yeah. until I tried to find highlights for, I think it was the England v India series just after Border Gavaskar Trophy. I, yeah. I didn't know BC, it was only on BCCI TV. So I searched and I searched and I searched <laughs> and I couldn't find anything. I'm like, oh my God, we are so lucky with our highlights. Yeah. And it's like that with the yeah. AFL as well. They're uploaded within a day maximum for all their games. So we're, we seem to be pretty good at running YouTube channels. Well, I'm getting it. As Australia is just blessed with high quality highlights. Like, yeah. we take it for granted as well. Like, we wind at our soccer highlights being two minutes long we that we there is arguments about that and it seems on another perspective we get it so lucky like good yeah, gosh you do. You yes, do. You do. okay uh, yeah so what are your thoughts on cricket and olympics i'm in favor of it on a broad basis because i think it will give a chance for associate nations to gain a bit more attention and hopefully gain a bit more money to yeah. spend on infrastructure and see what the better teams are doing, maybe, because they could, like, mingle with the Australian or the Indian team and say, okay, this is how you train. This is how your selection process works. Right. So it could be more streamlined. But it will be complex getting it to work because you can't just play it in half an hour. 
it's going yeah. to have to be at least like a T10 or a 100 ball tournament. And qualifying for that as well is going to take a while. Right. It's like yeah. the football at the Olympics. Hmm. I, I considered maybe they should limit it to under 23s as well, like the football, but that also might not be enticing enough for nations yeah. to get involved. So it will be complex. Yeah, it will be complex. Also, also then you can't have uh, cricket at the English Olympics, right? <laughs> Mm. Because oh, the, in two weeks, there is no way that you're going to have X number of matches getting completed mm. in like those two weeks. There's yeah. no way it, that's happening. They're going to have to stretch out qualifying over such a long period of time. Yeah. And then you have questions about where are they going to be played? Are the boards going to be happy with maybe making less money? Yeah. And things like that. There's a lot of hurdles they need to get through in the next seven or eight years. Also, ICC happens. said that they're trying to include it in the 2028 Olympics. So, hmm. suppose suppose it gets included. So, uh, I think it's hmm. going to be in uh, USA, right? LA. Uh, yeah. LA. 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 Yeah, yeah, LA. LA. So, are there enough grounds there to have like five matches consecutively going on at the same time? I don't think so. Unless they use baseball grounds, which I don't think the baseball teams would allow us to because it means we have yeah. to dig up part of their, yeah. part of their playing field. I I don't know. Like, LA yeah. probably doesn't have a massive cricket community other than maybe suburban grounds where expats are playing. Yeah. So, it, like you said, I, I, someone said to me, I think it would be far more viable to put it in 2032 when it's in yeah. Brisbane yeah. and we've got a whole bunch of grounds, even if they make qualifying matches all over Australia. Yeah. Like, that could work far better. Yeah. <laughs> So that was it, guys, from our side, Nightwatch and Cricket Channel. We had Lockie from Biased World of Cricket. Please do follow him. Check his YouTube page out, which he has started recently. And do like, share, and subscribe to our channel and his channel. We have his link in the description. Thank you for having me, guys. You it was really good. perfect take, by the way. Soham gave a perfect take, by the way. Yes. Mm. I'm glad. I'm glad <laughs> my student <laughs> has learned. <laughs> I'm glad I'm also, Loki, thank you for being so amazing and giving us your time. Genuinely appreciate it, buddy. That's all thank good. That was fun, man. That was really enjoyable. That's what she said. <laughs>